bangs. <laughs> Fringe. I tend to use those two terms interchangeably. I'm going to try to say bangs for the sake of my American guests and stylists, but I may slip into fringe every now and then because that's honestly my preferred term. They go back and forth. Bangs can do amazing things. Bangs can lengthen a face. Bangs can widen a face. They can narrow a face. They can hide features we're self-conscious about. They can highlight features that need to be highlighted. Bangs may not be for everyone, but I think there is a bang for everyone. Does that make sense? So we can have long curtain fringe, we can have short fringe, we can have side swept fringe, and each one of those things is gonna accomplish something different. And we're gonna have a different perception of each of those things based on what's kind of in style and in fashion at the time. Over the next few days, I'm gonna talk about many different types of fringe. The first one I'm gonna talk about is one that we often call a curtain fringe. A curtain fringe is going to be a longer fringe that has to be swept away from the face. It's kind of usually around the nose or lips. Um, and it's also one that can be parted from either side or in the center. My reference points for almost any fringe that I cut is going to be that top of the head, right where it curves away from the comb. So set the comb on top of the head, keep it level right where the head curves away from the comb on the center part. That's going to be the tip of my triangle. And then I'm gonna part down past the brow in between the brow and the temple. And that's going to be the two sides of my triangles. I want to make sure that that is as symmetrical as possible so that my fringe is balanced on either side. Now I call this letting the head tell you what to do. The features on the face told me where to go to. The shape of the head told me where to start from. The only time I don't listen to what the head is trying to tell me in this case, some people have pretty prominent temple areas just below the recession. This may sometimes end up in my line, and I don't care how much this hair is begging to be in there. In most cases, it doesn't know what it's talking about. It's going to be sad and lonely if you cut it and include it into the bangs. Just don't. We're starting from that high point where the head starts to curve forward. We're finishing between the brow and the temple. Now, one thing to think about is the way that hair moves. If I push hair to one side, it's going to appear shorter because it has to move across the face. So if I have a hair here, and I'm right here at like the cheekbone, and then I push it way over here, look how short that would appear. It's like up to the brow. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If I'm in the center, and I'm as long as the cheekbone, and I push to the side, now it's past the brow. So the further that hair has to travel, the shorter it's going to appear when it gets to its final destination. If I want a long curtain fringe that can be parted to either side and in the center, then I need to cut something that's straight across. That way, I push everything over this way. The hair that travels the furthest from over here is going to appear the shortest, and the hair that has to travel the least distance is going to appear the longest. So I'll have a nice short to long. Same thing in the other direction. It's going to appear short to long. And then if I part from the center, it's going to open up and appear short to long from the center to the outside. So if you want your curtain fringe to be able to part on either side and also in the center, you need to cut it straight across. I like to make sure the hair is nice and damp so that I can see, really get that curl to activate and talk to me and see where that hair wants to sit. Now that I've scrunched up her hair, you can see that natural wave that this, this mannequin is dealing with. And if I want my curtain fringe to be about lip length, then now I know I can cut it about lip length. If I were to cut it, let's see. If I were to pull it tight, that gets longer than her lips, which tells me if I were to pull it tight and cut it at the lips, then it would bounce up even higher than I wanted it to. So we're gonna cut with low tension on damp hair. I'm gonna use the wide teeth of my comb. In order to get a reference, I'm gonna do what I just did a second ago. I'm gonna scrunch it. I'm gonna grab it at the scalp and scrunch it. Really let that hair bounce up. Now that that natural texture is activated, I might still cut it a little bit longer than I, than I really want. Now I've got a reference point. 
I'm going to keep the, the hair as close to the body as possible. And we're going to cut straight and level. Palming my comb, that comb is in the way, so why can't I just lift my comb up out of the way as I'm palming it? So that looks pretty flat, but if I were to take it, let's say she wants to part her hair on the side, sweep it over this way. It has that slightly, just really slight, shorter to longer sort of appearance. If I part it in the center, It's still gonna have that shorter to longer appearance or the opposite side. I still have that little bit of fringe right there and it's looking shorter from the inside, longer to the outside sort of feel to it. Now you'll notice it still looks a little bit heavy. So the last thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna resection them. Now that I've got my triangle back, I'm going to take pie shaped sections out of this triangular sectioning. So I'm going to take three mini triangles out of this triangle. I'm going to go from my center and section out this little baby triangle, one in the center, and then another one on the side, really trying to all still come to the same center point. Not from the top of the head but from the top of this section. And you can see that little triangle. This, uh, this is all hair that's falling in the same place. I wait until about a third, until about a third of this hair here falls out. And then I'm gonna bend my fingers to spread it out and just do some gentle point cutting through there. Same thing here, second triangle. Wait until about a third of that hair falls out and then just do some deep point cutting in virtually the same direction as the hair growth. I'm not trying to remove length, I'm trying to leave hair left over. But you'd be surprised what just a couple subtle hair removals will do. Now when we part to the side, it's looking less heavy than it did before. Same thing, when I part in the center, I haven't removed any more length. When we, let a, when we let a third of that hair fall back out, when we were putting some texture into it, we were maintaining that length and making sure we didn't cut into it. And this will work on pretty much any length of curtain fringe. Some people want it longer to the chin. Some people might want it up to the nose. My general rule is cut it straight so that no matter which way you sweep it, it'll look short to long. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you enjoy being nerdy about hair and hearing the occasional dad joke, go ahead and check out another one of my videos. If you want to see them as soon as they come out, go ahead and click subscribe. Feel free to share this video with any of your nerdy friends. I'll see you next time. Thanks.